Hello guys, this is Code and Code and this is the 8th lecture of this number theory series and in this lecture we are going to stu uh, study about Euclid division algorithm and also it, there would be an introduction to modulo arithmetic. So let's start the lecture. So we start the lecture with Euclid division lemma which says that if we have two in integers a and b then there exist uh, p and uh, sorry q and r such that you can write a is equals to bq plus r where b is the divisor of uh, b is the divisor and r is remainder so we all know that remainder is always smaller than divisor Not, nothing new here so let's see how this can help us understand modular arithmetic a little bit you might have seen these formulas uh, at many places that if you are going to calculate two numbers sum of two numbers modulo mode then you can calculate it n1 modulo mode plus n2 modulo mode then whole uh, modulo mode then uh, for same formula goes for multiplication n1 into n2 modulo mode is equals to n1 modulo mode into n2 modulo mode then whole modulo mode uh, why this formula works and what is the proof for these two formulas remember the same doesn't work for division for division we calculate um, modulo multi uh, multiplicative inverse and hence that doesn't work on division but it works for addition subtraction and multiplication so let's see why these two formulas hold using Euclid division lemma so since we have to calculate it uh, you, uh, modulo MOD that is why I have written the number N1 as mode multiplied by Q1 plus R1 and N2 as mode into Q2 plus R2 you, uh, and this can be written we have uh, as says Euclid division lemma so to calculate N1 plus N2 modulo mode we can write N1 as mode into Q1 plus R1 and n2 as mode into q2 plus r2 and then taken whole mode mod now you know when you are calculating mode some integer then all the multiples of that integer would result into zero so this and this would result into zero if you are calculating mod then all multiple of mod would result into zero that is why this and this because these two are multiple of mod would result into zero and finally we would be left with r1 plus r r2 modulo mod now what is r1 r1 is a remainder when n1 is divided with mod and what is r2 r2 is reminder when n2 is divided with mod and how you can calculate their remainder in computer science you calculate them using modulo operator that's why r1 can be calculated using n1 modulo mod plus r2 calculated as n2 modulo mod that is why these two formulas are equivalent after calculating r1 and r2 you take their sum and then uh, find the result take it taken as modulo mod so that is why n1 plus n2 modulo mod is equals to n1 modulo mod plus n2 modulo mod and then take whole taken uh, there's some taken modulo mod the same goes uh, this using the same argument you can prove uh, the formula for multiplication that multiplication also holds and using the same argu argument you can prove for uh, subtraction also so this this was something uh, this was a little about modular arithmetic let's move on to uh, Euclid division algorithm now so Euclid division algorithm can be used to calculate GCD or highest common factor of two integers a and b if you see uh, the recursive definition mathematical uh, mathematical recursive definition of gcd of a b is given like this gcd of a b is equals to a if b is zero otherwise gcd of a b is equals to gcd b comma a mode b that is reminder of a when divided by b if you convert this the 
mathematical definition the recursive mathematical de definition can directly be converted into code like this if b is 0 return a which is this condition otherwise that is else uh, you simply return gcd b comma a modulo b as easy as that now we are not here to look at the code and just fit into our mind we have we are here to understand why this works so let's look at this suppose we had to find gcd 140 comma 12 so it would go something like this if you uh, you might have uh, studied this technique euclid division algorithm in primary school while oh sorry in secondary school while uh, studying mathematics while calculating hcf we have used euclid division algorithm to calculate hcf of two numbers so first what, what we do we write the bigger number as on the left hand side and uh, the smaller number on the right hand side and apply euclid division lemma if you apply euclid, uh, euclid division lemma 140 can be written as 140 is equals to 12 into 11 plus 8 so this is the number this was divisor and this is remainder now in the next step what happens the divisor becomes the number and remainder becomes divisor so now 12 becomes the number and 8 becomes divisor 12 can be written as using euclid division lemma 8 into 1 plus 4 now 8 would become the number and 4 that was remainder would become divisor again as soon as you get 0 as remainder you know the divisor is actually their scf or gcd so 4 is your result in the next gcd call what you would have done you would have done uh, uh, you would made another gcd call to a sorry b comma a mode b now passing a mode b would result b to be 0 and as soon as you get b 0 you return a that is you return 4 now if you look at look at this thing as the function call it would be gcd 140 comma 12 now in the next step since b that is this term is not 0 what we would do we would make another gcd call that is recursive gcd call for b comma a mode b so it would be 12 comma uh, 140 mode 12 which is 8 now again we would make a GCD uh, recursive GCD call to 8 comma 4 which is 8 that is B B comma A mode B and then again as soon as you get B 0 A becomes uh, the GCD becomes 4 you would simply return A now uh, what happens is that the right hand side the B argument is always smaller than A if you uh, if you observe the b uh, argument is always smaller than a because b argument is actually remainder and a becomes a number you see uh, the first argument is actually b and the second argument is a number divided by b that is remainder remainder we know you uh, in we have seen in the euclid division lemma that remainder is always smaller than the divisor so this the second argument would always be smaller than the first argument but the problem is what if from main function we have passed 12 comma 140 this would happen if you do that from main function if you pass gc gcd 12 comma 140 what would happen 140 would become uh, would become the number that is you would pass since b is not zero you would make a gcd call to b comma a mode b so so a would become for the next time 140 and b would become 140 Modulo, uh, 12 modulo 140 and if you divide 12 from 140 the remainder would become 12 itself so even if you pass the first argument sm uh, smaller and the second argument larger after one swap the number itself the second number itself would become smaller and each time what we are doing we, we are simply checking if b is 0 if not then we are uh, passing b as the first argument and second argument as remainder that is what we are doing but now this was just an example let's take a more formal way to see why this works suppose or basically the proof 
suppose the GCD of A and B is G. There are three important observations. First, GCD of A0 is equals to GCD of 0 is that is A. Now, GCD of two numbers is the num highest number that divides both the numbers. Since 0 is divisible by any number, literally, so 0 is not the bound in here. Only A is the bound because 0 is divisible by any number. So the highest number that divides A would be their GCD and the highest number that divides A is actually A itself that is why GCD of A0 or GCD of 0A is actually equal to A. This was observation 1 which was like very little observation and another one which is again a small observation that is GCD of AB is equal to GCD of BA. Of course this is intuitive. I mean we don't have to prove it right because only if you change the ordering of two numbers, it doesn't change the highest number that divides both the numbers. So GCD of AB is equal to GCD of BA. Don't have to prove it again. This one is important. The observation third, the third observation says that GCD of AB is equal to GCD of A minus B comma B or that is equal to GCD of A comma B minus A. The same goes for addition also, but I'm not writing addition just for subtraction because this is what we are going to use to pre prove the algorithm that or the Euclid division algorithm. Now GCD of A B is equal to GCD of A minus B comma B or GCD of A comma B minus A. Now why this is true? Suppose uh, since we have already seen GCD of A B, let GCD of A B is G, then A can be written as G X and B can be written as G Y, where X and Y are some integers now uh, if we take a look at a minus b and b minus a a minus b can be written as g times x minus y if you replace these a b with these two then a minus b can be written as g times x minus y and b minus a can be written as g times y minus x now it clearly shows that a minus b it is divisible by g and b minus a is divisible by g when you write a number a is equal to gx what it indicates is that this number is divisible by g and this number is divisible by x as well so a minus b is divisible by g and a minus b is divisible by x minus y same goes for this so what it tells is that a minus b still is divisible by g and b minus a also is divisible by g while g is the highest number that divides a and b both hence their gcd does not change so third observation tells us that GCD of AB is equal to GCD of A minus B comma B or GCD of uh, A comma B minus A. Using these three observations we are going to study or look at this that is Euclid division lemma and why this works. Now we see uh, here what I am trying to do is trying to find SCF of 44 comma 12. Now using div Euclid division algorithm we can recursively used you can division uh, Euclid division lemma and evaluate the uh, SCF or GCD GCD again comes out to be 4 the GCD of 44 and 12 is 4 because 4 is the highest number that divides both the number if you see uh, GCD 44 comma 12 can be written as GCD 44 minus 12 comma 12 that is GCD of a B can be written as GCD of a minus B comma B which results into 32 uh, comma 12 so if we find gcd this that would be actually gcd of this number as well right so what we are going to do is that we know that if one of the argument is zero the other one is gcd so we would try to make one argument to be zero and we would do that by uh, recursively or by uh, uh, subtracting one number from another again and again so now GCD of 140, uh, GCD 44 comma 12 becomes GCD 32 comma 12 using observation third that we have seen in the previous slide and then GCD 32 comma 12 would be GCD 20 comma 12 again GCD 20 comma 12 would be GCD 8 comma 12 but now we cannot subtract B from A because B is smaller now so we would simply replace the position of a and b and 
this follows from observation 2 where GCD of AB is equal to GCD of BA. Now again we would uh, replace GCD of AB with GCD of A minus B comma B. So GCD of 12 8 would be GCD of 4 comma 8. Again B is, B is greater than A so we would swap their places so GCD of 4 8 is equal to GCD of 8 4 again using observation 2. Now GCD of 8 4 is GCD of 4 4 and GCD of 4 4 is equal to GCD of 0 4. As soon as one of the parameter becomes 0 the other one becomes the uh, GCD as seen in the uh, observation 1. So this was regular uh, repeated subtraction method using which we can calculate GCD. The GCD comes out to be uh, 4 which is actually true. But the problem here is that if you use repeated subtraction method you have to go a lot uh, you have to do a lot more operation than this because you have to subtract again and again and again. Now let's see uh, let's see how many times you can subtract a particular number B uh, from A or basically how many times you can subtract before swapping their values swapping their positions. Now uh, you see we have made three subtraction before we went there to swap those. If you see we went for three times before swapping them and three we also see here. Now again we went for one subtraction before we went again for swapping as you can see there is one and then we again went two subtraction before swapping because next time we would make uh, since B have become greater than A that is why we would swap and make another GCD call 4 0 as soon as B becomes 0 GCD becomes 4 now before again making another call we may we use two subtraction which can be seen here why there is a relation between the number of subtraction we are making before swapping and the number we see here there is a very big relation because a very important relation because the number of time you can subtract B from A is that you can subtract as many time till B actually is greater than or equal to the remaining number. So basically whenever you are rem uh, removing 12 one time that is you are removing the first uh, multiple of 12 from 44 uh, from 44 and if you remove again then you are actually subtracting second multiple of 12 from 44 and if you subtract again that is you are subtracting third multiple of 12 from 44 that is you can subtract as many times as 44 divided by 12 and I am talking about integer division 44 divided by 12 is actually 3 so that is why you can only div uh, remove 3 multiples of 12 and then the remaining number is actually remainder of 12 when you divide uh, sorry of 44 when you divide 44 by 12. So instead of going again and again and subtracting what we know that if I keep on subtracting the result at one time would be remainder of 44 modulo 12. So instead of going again and again I can simply replace 44 with the bigger number with bigger number modulo smaller number so bigger number that is 44 would be replaced by 44 modulo 12 and the other number would remain as it is the smaller number would remain as it is so it this would become this this in a single operation I don't have to go again and again I can simply do this uh, a mode b and then write b but then we know a mode b is smaller than b itself so we have to swap that is why in the formula you see B first and A mode A mode B later and that is the reason instead of going again and again subtracting we can simply see that we can subtract as many uh, till till the point where the other number becomes the remainder so instead of going again and again subtracting we can directly calculate remainder and the operation can be done in a single operation and that is why this GCD algorithm uses these two steps as soon as the remainder becomes 0 which indicates that A is actually the divisor and hence A have to be the GCD that is why when B becomes 0 you return 
a otherwise we calculate their remainder that would be a mod b and since we know that a mod b would be, would be smaller than b and the second argument have to be smaller that is why we pass b comma a mod b this is basically your uh, swapping <coughs> swapping statement so that is actually a swapping statement so you are calculating a modular b that would be your second argument and first would be b and that is why this gcd algorithm works like this so in the uh, next lecture we will be solving problems related to modular arithmetic and also uh, gcd and one more thing this is a recursive algorithm i would encourage you to write down uh, iterative algorithm which also have the same complexity the complexity of this algorithm is log of max a comma b and this is recursive as you can see and i advise you to write down your own iterative algorithm to find gct so till then thank you guys for watching and keep coding